Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the show. And today we have a very special guest indeed. We are joined by Joey Harris. You guys may know her as Margot from the recent 2022 release of Halloween Ends. Joey, how are you today? I'm so good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Um, you know, as as I kind of just alluded to with your role, I mean, you have just been in probably the biggest horror blockbuster movie of the year. Um, how does that kind of feel for you? Um, it's very, very surreal. Um, I think I've I've probably said this before. It still has not quite hit me. I just it doesn't quite feel like I'm watching myself. I just can't believe it. It just doesn't feel right. You know what I mean? Like I watch it when there's no way in hell that's me right now. It's just not happening. So um, <laughs> it's very. You know, I, I think, um, you know, when it comes to Halloween, Halloween's been such a major franchise, not just in horror, but in movies in general, for, what, since, since 1978, when the original mm-hmm. one came out. So um, the fact that they finally wrapped it up in, in 2022 um, for you, how what's been the general vibe for you from maybe fans or within the acting world um now that this kind of saga has come to an end um uh personally i've received a lot of love i believe um uh i'm sure rowan has because he's so incredibly talented and i think my fellow team bullies have received a lot of love and obviously you know the leading girl so Mm -hmm. um I know there there are obviously the their fair share of people who you know have watched it since 78 and you know don't agree with the direction the film went but personally because I've watched them all growing up I I loved the depth that they brought to it and uh the character building I, I really really enjoyed it and so I've seen that reflected for, for me, I've, I've seen that in fans, so that's been really no, special. That's, you know, that's fantastic, and that's, for me as a fan, uh, you know, I've, I've put it quite publicly out there that I really enjoyed the movie, um, you know, and and, I, and I, I strongly believe that in years to come, people will take it as an individual movie and think, do you know what, this is actually very, very good, and as you said, very in-depth, um, mm-hmm. It's just one of those. I think it's it's really no one wants the saga to end, and the fact that it's finally ended, it, it that, I think that's why a lot of people maybe have um said they're not too happy with the direction. I agree. I think people, um, even though they know that it's it's done, I feel like they just wanted they just wanted one little chance that he did not die at the end. Yeah. So, you know, they're still hanging on for dear life, but literally. <laughs> <laughs> So when it comes to uh, the movie itself, um, how what was it like on the production? What was it like for you maybe day one at the production of Halloween Ends? Oh, gosh. So we shot in Savannah, uh, as you might know. And for me, I first off, I had never been to Savannah. I didn't know what to expect. I've always wanted to go there because it's very historical. It's very beautiful. Um, and so I got there and I was already starstruck by the whole process. And so I landed, they took me to the hotel and my first day I was doing my COVID testing, um, which would be at the production office. So Mm -hmm. they picked me up from my hotel, took me to production and they had all these, um, pictures on the wall of each one of us and our characters. And they would go, oh guys, this is Margo. This is our Martin. And I was like, oh my God. (laughs) <laughs> like what? Yeah, that's me. And to have people recognize you in a different character than you are, like mm-hmm. recognize you as somebody different than yourself, is so it's such a strange feeling. Um, so that was the first thing that I felt so <laughs> giddy with. And the second is the next day, I believe it was, I went to do wardrobe. So I went to do fitting and. I was in there for maybe two hours. We tried on so much stuff. And I think that's the one because obviously, you know, it's a very different style from my own. And I was taking things on, taking things off. They were, you know, I had to do this and they would pin it on my back to take it in. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. So I think for the the two first big hits because they just came back to back. And obviously I had never done anything like that before. So it was blindsiding, but it was so, 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 so much fun. And then obviously you get to set, and then what's better than that? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
Um, so with regards to Margot, obviously she was part of the team bully group. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I would say, you know, Margot definitely had more of a compassionate side than the others certainly did, I feel. Um, how did it feel for you to play, a, maybe like, a, especially in, in sort of this modern day, how did it kind of feel to play like a, like a team bully, be a part of a team bully group? Um, I think it was uh, one of those things where, you know, you watch all the high school movies and you see that there are groups of bullies and you always hate them. You're always like, oh man, you suck. Just get off the screen. And so I was, um, I thought that I would watch it and really hate myself because again, that wasn't um, the character that you see on screen is a character that was created after production. It was it was in the ADR. So, so I, I was really an asshole before that. So um, watching it, wait, what was the question? <laughs> going off again um so so how did it feel playing uh like a a character who was within maybe like a teen bully group yes thank you i lose my train of thought when no I problem. Okay. so i was like oh god i hate that person get off the screen and so i was thought that's what it was going to feel like watching myself mm -hmm. and watching our group back but i i realized that when you create a character background and when you've worked on it behind the scenes, you have a special love for it. So it's not like you can really hate them the way that you want to, you know what I mean? In a classic bully fashion, you can't do that. So I was, it felt normal in, in like I wasn't playing somebody that you absolutely wanted to murder. You know what I mean? It, it didn't feel like I was, I was playing somebody deserving of that because, well, frankly, I don't think my character did, but no. it felt strange, it, but exhilarating at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, because during the, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, you know I'll, I'll say it because I think by now a lot of people watching this have probably seen the movie. So obviously Margot had, out of that teen bully group, I'd say she probably had the most brutal death, in my opinion, um, just the, the fact of being trapped <laughs> in the cage underneath the car um what was that process like very very emotionally draining um it was a process that took place over four night shoots um wow. so and as you know in the movie it's it's only a couple minutes long the entire scene um but i still am under that car when everybody dies except for billy so i was there for all the other deaths and all the other angles and so just because it's only a couple minutes scene doesn't mean i'm not under there for 10 hours in dirt and mud which was the case and so it was very very emotionally draining um as you see i'm crying because i'm gonna die so it was stressful i would also say and there were times when they would just have to come over because they have to do you know medic checks they'd come over and they'd be like is there anything in your eyes here's eye wash like this that pull me out of the fence when they'd have to move stuff to do safety and um there was one scene um that you see in the film and it's the shot of um mikey well that's the name in real life it's a shot of terry and he is getting burned and then you see me in the background underneath the fence and so I was actually several feet away from that blowtorch lighting this thing up. So wow. they had to do a whole safety spiel and say, okay, like there's gonna be flames, fire, blah, blah, blah. Just so you know, it's by your head, your hair, anything like this. They had to do that whole thing. And I was like, <laughs> great, thank you. What am I, grand. And so, um, it was just hectic, chaotic, and everything I loved, so. That's going to say, because it's, you know, I can imagine there must have been moments, you you know, you could feel incredibly claustrophobic being trapped under the cage. So I think oh, you, you and grueling that for four days, 10 hour days, can I have full props to you for that? Oh, yeah. And I think it's one of those things where um, I think my adrenaline I think that was the only thing that stopped me from being, you know, because I was excited to be there. It was, you know, it was my time to shine. And um, so I think the adrenaline was keeping me from kind of flipping out. But yeah, um, yeah put somebody with claustrophobia under there and they're gone. 
<laughs> Thank the Lord, I didn't have it. But... Um, so other than, I, I would imagine for you, that must be quite a memorable moment you have on set. Um, Absolutely. Do you have any kind of other memorable moments or behind the scenes uh, situations that kind of stick into your head the most? Let me think behind the scenes, funny stuff. Um, I really think that personally, one of my funniest uh, experiences was in the original script when I mooned Jamie Lee Curtis at the gas station. <laughs> and um, so we filmed that probably 50 times and everybody saw my butt. And at that point I was like, <laughs> everybody, seen it. it's not like it's, you know, who's going to care now. And so um, David would just give me all these random things to shout and say as I pull my pants down and <laughs> um it was so funny and after every single take um I, I I sometimes I was like oh that felt breezy so I would go and run and watch playback <laughs> like that and um I would just see in playback you would see me disappear behind the doors and then we call cut and Rowan and Jamie would just bust out laughing and it was so funny and inside after I would shout and pull up my pants and walk back in that's where the rest of our bullies were they were inside like trying to be quiet and they would just plug their noses and walk behind the thing because some of them were so bizarre like one of them was Jimmy Chong this bitch and like they were they were so <laughs> they were so funny and so random and you were just screaming them with your butt hanging out of the door and it was just really funny <laughs> i just can't imagine like one of the one moment in in one of the biggest sagas and you've mooned jamie lee curtis <laughs> i know that's a know. claim to fame i know imagine imagine the very first thing my family sees in of me in a movie is that i've <laughs> my butt's up they're like oh that's joey all right <laughs> <laughs> um so did you get to spend much time with jamie lee curtis um, I got to spend time with her during um, our read through of the scene, during rehearsal, during um, obviously our time on set. But we we were always we were always working, you know, we we're working ladies. Yeah. And um, but even when we were working, she was so sweet, so funny. She she's quirky and and has a really cute personality. So um, it was like a breath of fresh air to always be around, even yeah. though you're like work it's nice to have that comedic relief you know what I mean yeah absolutely um so kind of jumping a little bit away uh from the movie um sort of sort of growing up were you a big fan of horror movies or were you just a big fan of acting in general uh, what was what was it like for you growing up the all the above um I wanted to be an actress and a musician since I was well I, since I could talk and um Every year, I'm a, I'm a holiday freak. So every year, I watch all the Halloween movies, all the Christmas movies. Mm. And um, so some people will say I'm obsessive, but I see nothing wrong with it. And um, so that's, that's what I did every single year growing up. Um, watched all the Halloween movies, all the horror films in general. I have this whole list that I watch every single year. Oh, oh, good catch. <laughs> that I watch every single year um, to kind of satiate my cravings for horror. And um, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, and needless to say, I'm a fan. Absolutely. So have you ever done any um, theater work or ever considered doing theater work? Um, I've never done theater work aside from the mandatory fifth grade play yeah, um, yeah. at the tea party. So, that was my only work in the theater, but I, <laughs> I do think that I might be interested in, you know, something like Broadway because I am a musician, but, right. um, as of right now, I don't really see it in my cards just because I haven't, um, personally auditioned for it right now. My happy place and what I'm striving for is on screen and in the music studio. So, um, that's primarily what I'm working towards right now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I think I could definitely see you're going to have a very, uh, very long and successful career. I mean, you know, I know you've got another, uh, another movie. I'm sure it's a movie coming out soon. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, Lisa Frankenstein. So, um, 
we filmed that in New Orleans starting August, and I filmed August through September. And uh, it's this very quirky, untimely, you know, offbeat, funny horror. I don't really know how to describe it uh, other than it's kind of in a category of its own. Um, I've worked with such incredibly talented people on that film and um, our director, Zelda Williams, she made her directorial debut. And, you know, I've gotten to work with Cole Sprouse, Catherine Newton, um, I've gotten to work with Henry Ackenberry and Liza Sobrano. It's, it's, it was a really incredible experience and it takes place in the eighties and I play, there we go. I play a goth, punk chick in the 80s and so you know my hair is all teased up and my eyeliner is so thick and um I'm just really uh Catherine Newton's character Lisa I'm just really her worst night and um it's like the name Lisa Frankenstein it's just kind of a take on Mary, she Mary Shelley's novel um so I think it I think the audience will really really love it because it's 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 very very independent yeah you know and, and it's those quirky um one of a kind kind of movies i think it, it tends to draw quite a lot of people so i definitely think because i believe the i know it's in its post-production stages but i'm sure it will come out sometime next year um so i definitely believe that, that could be a movie to to keep an eye out for because i'm looking forward to seeing that I, I definitely agree. Um, I think it's one of those films that uh, for whatever reason, the audience relates to it. You know, if what, no matter what it is, it's just one of those strange things that will be a comfort for somebody just because it's so bizarre and it really is like a fairy tale and it's like your own little world to live in that's so different from your own. And so mm -hmm. I think I think the audience will really love it. Because I do. Well, so. <laughs> so in terms of any projects, uh, obviously you're at the very early stages of your career, um, mm -hmm. what would be your dream role or dream movie to ever star in? Oh, that's a really, really good question. Um, I'm a huge fan of um, things like Euphoria and Outer Banks, things that are really dark and have a lot of character dimension and are... Um, like Outer Banks is, it has more action and it has more mystery than Euphoria, but Euphoria has drama and relatability. And um, and if it's relatable, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and, um, but um, things like that are, are really, really interesting to me. And uh, female power roles. Um, yeah. I like something that's dark and gritty and where I can really play a badass and, um, so that's really one of my favorite things that I've always wanted to do. One of the roles I've always wanted to play is just really a hardcore, badass female character. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so uh, another question I suppose I have is um, who or what inspires you? Everyone. Everyone I work with uh, inspires me. I learn something new from every single person that I've gotten the chance to work with. Um, people that I've, I've watched growing up, uh, um, I love Michael Keaton. I love Dylan O'Brien. Um, who else do I, I love Sandra Bullock. There are so many incredibly talented actors that I've, um, followed and watched their works over the years because, um, I really just am drawn to their, uh, their natural ability to convey emotion and make it believable. Um, so I am very, very inspired by those people. And let me think, who are some, let me think, let me think, who are some of my favorite, who are some other actors that I've really been inspired by? I've recently discovered, um, I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right, uh, Odessa Azion. I'm not sure if I'm saying uh, it right. It's but, uh, yeah, and um, she's incredibly talented, and um, she was just in the new Hellraiser. Uh, she's the uh, one with awesome hair, and um, 
she is incredibly talented. Um, obviously Zendaya. Zendaya has mm-hmm. been my woman since I was a child. <laughs> so um, they're just people that uh, continue to inspire me and make me, you know, rethink all my methods and go, hmm, what do I do if I do this? Oh, I wonder if I, that's a good idea. You know, all these mm-hmm. wonderful things that play into your own little ability to perform. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's, I think, something that, uh, you know, I think people with open mindedness, very much like that, who can find the people that they're inspired by or people who, you know, they appreciate their work and they can take little bits of advice from people or take little tips and tricks from people. And then you can put it into your own performances. I think it shows shows quite well. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree completely. Um, So in regards back again to Halloween ends, I think the movie came out around three weeks ago maybe three four weeks ago i think in the uk i'm, I'm basing it on anyway um yeah. so just before that you must have experienced the red carpet um what was that like experiencing a red carpet for the first time um again no other way to describe it other than surreal i think um walking and having people shout your name and and take pictures of <laughs> in 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 masses <laughs> i think is always going to be a little bit alarming um yeah. and you know you have some understanding that people are you know obviously you see all those videos of the photographers being like oh blah blah, blah over here look over here mm-hmm. no <laughs> no they tell you what and how to point your toes how to tilt your shoulder how to look at them in the eye and their camera and do a circle and they <laughs> tell you single thing they want for a picture and to have 50 people shouting at you what they want you to do I just you'll notice that I kind of did the same thing in all my pictures because I was just processing I was like okay this is my practice round I guess (laughs) because I was just like oh my gosh I can't do all that at once so I was I was just internally panicking and trying my best to accommodate (laughs) it was wasn't working (laughs) but I hope I got what I wanted but (laughs) but you know I think the thing is a lot of people have to appreciate you know, obviously, you know, I know you've done a lot of acting before, but for, for, I mean, a production of this magnitude, you know, it, it's so, I mean, you have, you've kind of gone straight into the fire. I mean, you've just gone into probably the biggest production of the year and there's mm-hmm. thousands of people, high expectations, you know, so I think for, for what you've had to go through, you did incredibly well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. My mom's like, go, Joey, good job. I'm like, <laughs> Are you kidding me? Because you get so self-conscious, you know, because you're like, you look back on it, or you see the pictures and you're going, I did not do what they wanted to do. <laughs> you get self-conscious. And, um, but, you know, when you have people around you saying, you know, you did such a good job and you're so proud. You're like, you're right. I did. <laughs> you know? uh, it, it must be so cool for your friends and family as well to see, to see, especially something that I'm sure, you know, as you were younger, growing up, aspiring to be in something and, you know, regardless of the size of the role, you know, to be on a production that size, they must be so incredibly proud and happy. Yeah, I, I, I've gotten a lot of love from my family. So they, they've always been very, very supportive. Um, I'm right now where I'm at as I'm actually visiting my best friend back home so that I could watch the movie with her in theaters and awesome. her entire all went out and went to the theater and watched it and we all waited for you know the moment when my name came on the screen and I was like yeah go show it. <laughs> and so um I've had I've had such uh, a fun time listening to everyone's feedback and I mean I love getting getting praise for my work so I'm doing grand <laughs> <laughs> no that's it but I, th- I definitely think you know I'm really happy that you're having a very positive experience with it because I know especially with this particular franchise now I've interviewed quite a few people now from previous Halloween movies um maybe less let's say some that weren't so well received and um you know and and I know that they've they've had some of them had quite tough times of it so I'm really happy to hear that that you've had a very good positive time with it I think it's um also for me that um I know that some people have um, a different idea or expectation going into it, or they just really don't know what to expect. Yeah. Um, and so it just completely blindsides them. And then obviously they're like, well, that did not go the way I planned. And I think for me, um, I've had 
the chance to ask people and um, ask about their experiences and um, really get a firsthand look or explanation of, okay, it's going to be something like this, something like this, mm -hmm. something like this. So I at least have um, like a basic level that I can build off of and so that I'm not completely thrown into the water. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. I don't know. Some people, it, 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 some people get, also everyone else has, you know, like my, my best friend, uh, I wanted her to come to the premiere with me, but sometimes people just don't do good in those surroundings and they don't know it until they're thrown into them. And then they're like, yeah. Oh, this is not. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. many people, so many, there's, it's just a lot of people to talk to, you know what I mean? And yeah, that can yeah. be stressful. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, if, uh, so one of the final few questions I have for you is, um, again, I know you're very early on in your career, but if you could give somebody maybe listening or watching uh, like a piece of advice on whether they want to pursue their dream or their goal, um, what piece of advice uh, maybe helped you or would you give to them? This is my turn to be cheesy. Okay. Um <laughs> I honestly think one of the things that I've never heard mentioned that I find very, very important is um, building off-screen relationships with the people that you're working with. Um, I mean, clearly, if you guys don't get along, you don't have to push it. But I think um, from my experience, I've been able to become such good friends with the people that I work with and I talk to them all the time and you know I visit them we go surfing you know um my stunt double visited me when I was filming my when I was filming in New Orleans you know I think it's one of those things where when you especially when you're first starting out having people around you that can help guide you and help keep you grounded um as you're building your career, I think is very, very important. So some people will say, oh, creating, you know, being friends with somebody and playing outside of work is not professional. I, I think that it's one of the healthiest things you can do is to have an understanding and a relationship with that person on just a basic human level before you are caught up in all this stuff that strips your identity from you as you're filming. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, that's actually fantastic. You mentioned that because as you said, you, you hear a lot of really positive quotes and I think that's great, but sometimes some actual career advice, you know, I, I, again, I truly believe that somebody that interviews a lot of people, I know the importance of having to have good relationships with people, whether you necessarily get on with them super friendly or whether it's just like a professional level um I think that piece of advice is fantastic yeah just like just just and if you're worried they're you know they maybe they don't like you I mean I would say who cares but <laughs> um, I mean you, you want people to like you but you're never gonna have everyone you're never gonna yeah. have 100% like you so try your best to mm -hmm. make those relationships and just to have a good time and uh, with the people that you're working with, even outside of work. And I think you'll be so much happier and so much more grounded. That's at least how it's been for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you have any social medias or anything that you want to plug in? I absolutely do. Oh my gosh, my time is shine. Okay. <laughs> so uh, my Instagram is at Joey Harris official. Um, my old one was dumped off the earth. So that is oh, my yeah. account. Um, and that's really the only one I have. And if you want to add me on Snapchat, it's just Joe Joey H. That's my really <laughs> clever, clever, clever <laughs> name I came up with. So um, besides that, I don't really have anything else. Uh, you know what, I'll, I'll make sure to add your instagram in the uh, in the top of the description so people can go and follow you on instagram as well um joey thank you so much for joining us today it's been an absolute blast to talk to you thank you so much for having me i really appreciate it